Hey everybody, my name is Nick, Nick Cresses, as usually uh, it's pronounced by English speaking folks, but Nick Rieses, Rieses, uh, as pronounced by people in my native tongue, which does not sound like Borat at all, so I don't know why I did that. Um, I just want to make a little video about the new version of Clip Studio Paint, EX, I think. Uh, all these features are at least relevant in uh, these animation features and I'm really pleased with it because it kind of means that right now definitely for my storyboard work and I hope to do like some short animation someday you know so it's great if some guy goes like oh, I'm gonna direct my own stuff so who knows you know but it would be great um, and I'm really happy about these new features I just have a little axe to grind because this is a thing that comes up a lot, I find, lately. Uh, it also came up with, like, the last video I did is that about, like, six weeks ago, maybe longer, maybe two months ago, um, I wanted to add some features. You know, I wish there were some features to Clip Studio Paint. Um, I'm just going to call it Clip from now on. Kind of Clip Studio Paint. It is kind of annoying to say. Um, so I wish there were some extra features in Clip. Um, that I wanted to do for the storyboard project I was working on, which was some camera animation so I could zoom in on certain boards. And uh, I wanted to add some voice stuff and some music maybe. Uh, so I go off and Google it. And on like all these forums, like the Clip Studio Ask thing, you know, there's like a whole bunch of these, you know, experts, people with, you know, knowledge, right? Basically, people are just talking out of their uh, hiney. Uh, going like that'll never happen. That'll never happen. You know, because of reasons to do with licensing or whatever. And it sounded really convincing. You know, I'm like, ah, oh, that's a shame. You know. So uh, then I tried um, like a translated version of Clip Studio Action, which is like part of the Japanese package. Long story short, that didn't really work because I could put all that stuff. You could just open a clip file, but when I try to open it back up in like my licensed version of Clip Studio Paint, I couldn't edit it and I could only remove like the added effects and sounds and so on. You couldn't even play the sounds if I remember correctly. So then I spent like a month working in Open Tunes trying to do that particular storyboard sequence and that wasn't great. You know, sorry Open Tunes peoples, but you know, I'm just, uh, let's just say I love Clip Studio a lot. I'm very used to it. I really enjoy drawing it. But I'm a little annoyed and happy, of course, but that like, you know, Two months later, after all these guys go like, gals, I don't know, what, uh, gals, gals, people of indeterminate gender. That's not the point, right? These dumbasses, um, are like, it'll never happen, it'll never happen. Like, fact, you know, they're stating it like fact, and there's no other, because, you know, a Japanese company, maybe there's not a lot of good press out there, or whatever, you know. I'm rambling, okay, I'm rambling, I'm annoyed. Don't trust everything you read online, kids. You know, research, maybe go with your own gut. Because I kind of had a feeling that they were going to do this. Because they were upgrading the 3D stuff as well. And releasing uh, some stuff. So I thought maybe they'll, they will add all the... I, I actually thought they might add a translated version of Action. This is even better. I've tried it out. And it actually, I think it works even smoother and nicer than Action did. So let's hop straight in. Um, basically, I want to talk about three main new stuff. There's some other stuff about colorizing automatically and removing tone. And you think you need a cloud server for that? I'm not even sure what that is because I haven't tried it yet. You know, this update's like only two days old, uh, and so far I've only tried the animation stuff because that's where my head was at. You know, I've been fiddling a lot with animation lately because it rocks. So I'm gonna show you three things. One is keyframe animation, which, I don't know, if you use Flash or maybe even uh, Photoshop, you might call it motion tweening. It's just moving things. I'm moving my hand on the screen. I don't think you can even see it, so I'll use my mouse. Like moving things around on the screen in nice smooth animations. If you want them to be smooth, you can make them jerky if you want to. Um, number two is camera animation, which actually really like it's being able to move the camera around I'll, I'll show you and third one's adding sound um, which is sort of obvious you know but 
I'll pop it in there. Um, damn it, I forgot to add a soundtrack. Time out. And time in. I kind of forgot to prep some stuff. I wasn't going to do the whole intro again. So anyway, let's go. Function number one, motion tweening, timeline animation, whatever you want to call it. Let's dive straight in. I've got this like really awesome animation of a farting bug. I called it poop bug when I drew it, but I think it's a fart bug, you know? If you hear any tick, 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 tick sound in the background, by the way, that's my dog. Who always picks the best time to start walking around when I'm recording something. Um, so, we've got this farting bug. So, you know, it's awesome. It rocks. Uh, but what if I wanted to make it move from one side of the screen to the other? Now, in the old way, there wasn't any, like, clear way, because everything was just basically frame by frame, you know? Uh, you might move it for, you know, well, 3 times 24 frames, whatever that is. <laughs> um, 60 frames, you might move it 60 times. It, it would not really be doable. So, how do we do it now? We press edit layers. Of, oh, whoop, enable keyframes on this layer. Ta-da! Now, you want to have this one, the operation thingy selected. And then you can just drag it over to where you want the start position to be. That'll automatically create a keyframe. It does. I swear it does. Oh, whoops. See, you have to be on the frame. No, let's, I'm going to leave this one in because, you know, whatever frame you're on, that's where the key will be created. So. Let's destroy this one here because it's like in the middle. Yeah, I might as well delete all keyframes. Doesn't matter. Uh, let's go back to the beginning. And drag this wonderful little fella to where I want it to start. And go to the end. And drag him over. And because I've enabled keyframes, this will automatically create a keyframe. Um, if I did like rotation and scale, well, I might not scale it a little bit. Uh, but we're going to ignore that, you know, afterwards when we're fiddling with this. It's just to show you that scale is also taken into account. So, let's play and see what happens. Ta-da! The scale is not very apparent. Okay. So, but he, as you can see, it, uh, it moves across the screen in a nice smooth motion. As you might know, well, let me just quickly, you know, show you that scale does in fact work. We'll undo this later. So now it's tiny. Let's play it again. So you see, it's getting tinier. So let me just hit undo. There you go. Final keyframe still there. Now, as you might notice when we play this, it speeds up. You know, slow, faster, and then slows down. That's because of the interpolation. Uh, and you can edit that in the timeline. Uh, sorry, in the graph editor. Which, if you're familiar with any other animating programs, should be familiar to you. Know? Um, so, let's go there and see what's going on. Well, we've got all these other stuff, like scale now also. is still... Hmm. I guess I undid it enough times that it completely gone. Uh, rotate, rotate, center. I'm just going to close all those out. I haven't quite figured out what V is yet. You know, it's like everything else or something. I don't know. X and Y, of course, In when it's in 2D, it's only X and Y. It's not going to be Z, right? Because that, you know, you might uh, use that scale for that, you know, to give the illusion of something going forwards and backwards. But V, it just says other. I don't know what V is, right? But here, um, because it doesn't really go up and down, we've got a graph going from zero to something, numbers doing things in Y, which is left and right apparently. 
Um, and as you can see, these are smooth right now, so it's easing in and out. That's because I always set it to smooth interpolation by default when creating keyframes, but you can change them. Um, you can also, before I go and switch them out, you can sort of break these handles. And then let's say, for instance, whoops, let's not do that. Let's say I wanted to try this out. What would that do? Actually, I don't really know. Then it just goes fast and slower. So you're going to have to fiddle with this yourself. But just let me quickly show you that you can just switch out. Because this was another one of those things, you know, I had to figure it out. Because right click will not do anything. Right click only zooms in and out. In the graph editor, uh, if you go up here, the fiddly little button, you can go switch to, for instance, linear interpolation, which sometimes is what you want way more than smooth, right? So now, you know, if something might come by at a constant speed, you wouldn't want it to be, you know, going easing in and out. So there you go. There's your linear, li linear interpolation. So you can play around with that. Have fun. But it is kind of great, you know. This is such an addition. I don't want to even sound like a salesman, but god damn it, you know, this stuff's good. Um, let's just keep it a linear. Adding sound. Now, I just, uh, while I was away, you know, the time warping effects of recording. Hi. <laughs> time warping. <laughs> Get it? Um, let's go back to regular timeline thingy, my bobber, and we'll go up to animation, new animation layer, audio, right? Now there's nothing there yet. Uh, for some reason, uh, you can also do it like import like that, but I kind of prefer to add a layer and then just add some stuff to it. Doesn't really matter, you know. So, got this audio layer, go import audio files, fart session. You know, this is all serious stuff. And see, again, I made the same mistake. It added it at the point of the playhead, where the playhead is currently. It's not a huge deal. Uh, I already know it doesn't match up that well. So I'll play it for you. I'm checking for a second that it's actually picking it up. It's a humorous fart sound repeating, uh, made by me. I'm a little embarrassed now. Um, but, as you may have noticed, it didn't quite line up. So, I drag it like this. Uh, because I can see, you know, you can see the little wavelength. That's super helpful. I've played around a little with that in quality so low that I'm not going to show anybody, but with some lip syncing and... Being able to see the wavelengths does help with planning out um, your sync. See, I'm not, you know, I'm a self-taught guy, so I might use some terms inaccurately. So, I'll just call it syncing. Anyway. Ta-da! Isn't that awesome? It's kind of immature. But, uh, yeah, it's awesome, you know. So there's your adding audio. You can add music, whatever you want. Absolutely great. Now, and this, to me, you know, let's get away from farting bugs, you know. It's great. But uh, this is a version of a storyboard I did a while back. I think this was the one where I was wondering, wouldn't it be great if I could do pans and zooms and whatever? And I couldn't at the time. Uh, I also did this odd thing where I was using... SketchUp backgrounds, which I kind of regret now for storyboarding. I mean, it's not, it's not the greatest workflow because you get a little stuck in, and you're not really willing to edit your shots that much. But that's neither here nor there. I just uh, grab this little part, right? It's the guy who walks over and sits down to the lady who's not interested. It turns out to be a demon or something. Um, so what if I wanted the camera to zoom in on her while he does that, right? So what we do is we select, well, we don't even need to select the animation folder, but go back to animation, new animation layer, 
2D camera folder. Now right now I could add all these things to it. Nothing would happen because I need to put whatever uh, folder you want to work on. In this case there's only one. Put it inside the camera. Now that would allow you uh, to, to for instance also have a steady background and you can play around with it. Some things being affected by the camera and some not. Actually how the hell would that work? I don't know. <laughs> the camera should just catch everything, shouldn't it? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't quite figured that one out why it just did not automatically do everything. Like I said, this other tell me. A couple of days old, so some things I hope I'm not one of those people I was complaining about, you know? Like just talking stuff. But at least I can get it to work. And hopefully it's great. Um insecurity crept in there for a second. Uh so let me just set a keyframe here. Because I did learn this that, you know, when doing camera stuff, these boards are not moving individually. The camera just moves everything around. So you want to keep these keyframes uh, to make certain you can go back to like the standard camera position. So let's add a keyframe on our standard position. Let's see, where do we want to start it? Let's zoom out a little bit. That helps. Uh, where do we want to start? Let's say, yeah, past this point, right? So just add another keyframe. And yeah, let's go a little nutsy Fagan. That's at this point. Start zooming in and even. So that's really cool. Like, Whoa! Let's do some camera tilting. Whoa! Well, let's say right now I'm like, oh, that's too short. Just select and drag. That's not too hard, right? And it's beyond the scope of this. Uh, by the way, this is kind of cool because you can already see because I have. Um, enable camera thingies you can already see right now you can see the camera moving like it's kind of trippy isn't it so that's cool um and uh, just for workflow if you're going to do this i would advise uh, i think it's shift right yeah no it's not shift which one was it alt yeah if you alt drag you copy the keyframe Oh, a lot of playheads and that. Let's just say we did want to keep going here. All right? Don't copy it now. Uh, you alt drag your regular position. So, boom. I know it's still ghosting here, but trust me, it is a fact. Yeah. You can tell from this, right? If you can see the blue little dots, this has gone back to a default care position. Ooh, autosave. Can't do nothing while it's autosaving. And this is a huge file. <laughs> this is great. Oh, okay. So, forget about this. Let's come back to our little sequence. Because now, when I hit play, all you see are these blue lines, just whoa, you know, it's just trippy, but maybe not what you want. So, how do you do it? You turn on render 2D camera. I actually uh, put that in quick access. Let me actually turn that off. God, I'll find where it is. Oh yeah, settings of play, render 2D camera. You know, uh, should I go through, you know, you make a quick access panel, you can just drag any function that you think you might need often, just add it. You know, let's say one frame, go to end. I don't really need that because there's a little button for it, but see, there. It just shows up. And you can even uh, delete that. Okay, so we set it to render to the camera. We hit play. We're going to have to wait a little. Now it's like pre rendering. 
and it does that thing where it looks like it's going to crash, but it doesn't. Don't worry. It's a good time to have a sip of coffee. That's what I usually do. <laughs> you know, should I cut hair? I don't know. Let's see how long it takes. It's taking kind of a long time. Of course, when I tried it out first. Maybe this is because of the screen recording. Because last time I tried it out with the same file, just went pretty fast. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! So there you go. Camera animation. That's super cool. Especially for storyboards. I think that's really cool. Even though my mentor told me. Like you don't need to do that for storyboards, but I still kind of think it's pretty cool. Um, so that's it. Clip Studio Paint rocks. Honestly, I think I paid like 200 euros for it, something like that. And this money just well spent. I have been using it for years now. I haven't had to pay for any upgrades. It really is the greatest. And somebody else thinks so too. See? Ah, my dog really agrees with me. Um, that she wants to not do this or just sit on my lap in a way the camera doesn't pick her up. Yay! All right, say bye! Bye! Yep, bye.